Semiconductor Manufacturing International Corporation, SMIC, is China's flagship semiconductor foundry. It's a leading player in challenging TSMC, Samsung, and Intel for the lead in the semiconductor technology race. Founded by the intensely driven Richard Chang, SMIC ruthlessly hired from its Taiwanese rivals, outcompeted its Chinese ones, and quickly established itself as the top dog in China's semiconductor space. In this video, let's look at SMIC, China's fiercest semiconductor foundry player and the industry's crown jewel. But first, I want to take the time to ask you to subscribe to the Asianometry newsletter. Getting tired of me saying the same thing over and over again? Well, imagine me having to say it so many times over and over again. I want to call out a recent post I just finished about Lin Biao, the CCP's ill-fated number two. To help better show his character and the unusual nature of his illness, I added a collection of anecdotes to the story to help better illustrate his unfortunate plight. It really goes to show just how of a troubled uh, individual he was. You can find the link to the newsletter in the video description below, or you can just go to asianometry.com. Subscribe, and I'll try to make it worth your while. You can expect a new newsletter every four days at 1 a.m. Taiwan time. Much thanks. SMIC was founded in January 2000 by Richard Chang. Chang is an interesting fellow. Born in Nanjing, his family fled to Taiwan along with a million other ethnic Chinese migrants. The Wai Shenren, as they were called, grew up in Taiwan but held deep roots to the Chinese mainland. I did a video about them earlier. Many of the Wai Shenren, disoriented and feeling unwelcome in Taiwan, emigrated to other locales like the United States. Chang was one such person. After graduating from the prestigious National Taiwan University, he got a master's degree from the State University of New York in Buffalo. Then he and his wife went to work for Texas Instruments in Dallas. TSMC founder Morse Zhang, uh, no relation, also worked at TI for over 25 years. At TI, Richard Chang oversaw foundry work in East Asia for 20 years. He did well there and took early retirement in 1997. Returning to Taiwan, he started a foundry of his own, Worldwide Semiconductor Manufacturing Corporation, and eventually sold it to TSMC in 2000. Richard left and soon then itched for another opportunity, and China came calling with cheap land, water, and electricity. He crossed the strait and started SMIC with $1.6 billion of investment from Goldman Sachs and a few other private equity firms. Chang and SMIC soon found themselves in fierce competition with Grace Semiconductor. Grace was founded around the same time as SMIC by two political heavyweights. The first was Winston Wang, son of powerful Taiwanese industrialist Wang Yongqing. Wang Yongqing had founded one of Taiwan's biggest chemical empires, Formosa Plastics Corp. His uh, daughter runs HTC. The second heavyweight was Zhang Mianhang, son of Chinese paramount leader Zhang Zemin. Naturally having such connections would put Grace at the very forefront of the Chinese semiconductor foundry industry. SMIC knew that it would have to compete extremely hard in order to distinguish itself from the competition. They did. As it turns out, being a rich guy's son does not help much in competitively running a semiconductor foundry. For Richard Chang and his team, this was their second startup, and they knew how to get things done. In contrast, Winston Wong had little experience in building and running leading-edge independent foundries. Not that he didn't have any, I think he worked it before in, um, in memory, but it wasn't the same as logic. Grace could not keep up. In the same time Grace took to get its first foundry to mass production, SMIC had two in Shanghai, a bunch more in the hopper, and was already prepping for their New York Stock Exchange IPO. Grace settled into a number two position, and the Chinese government soon shifted their favor to SMIC in terms of subsidies, cheap loans, and more. By 2004, less than five years after its founding, SMIC had ascended to become the fourth biggest player in the independent foundry industry. Only TSMC, UMC, and Singapore national champion Chartered Semi were ahead of it, and it was rapidly eating up market share. Two big things you need when running a startup foundry is a fab to make the chips and a lot of talented people to run it. Otherwise, I'm not sure you might have a feasible business. You might have a Hongqing. SMIC's business model at the time is not all that different from an NFL or NBA sports team. A foundry needs an expensive multi-billion dollar fab to do their work, 
likewise a sports team needs, quote unquote, an expensive multi-billion dollar arena. Neither their organizations can raise or risk the billions of dollars to self-finance one. So, get someone else to do it. Unable to tap bank financing, SMIC thus went to Chinese municipalities around the country and got those local governments to finance a FAB's construction. SMIC would then move into the FAB on a contract basis to operate it. The local government would get some fee, I guess, and the opportunity to build a, quote, semiconductor cluster. Kind of like how NFL teams like to say that on game day, local businesses benefit from all the increased traffic around their billion-dollar stadium. You should Google those claims to see how it turned out for those cities. As SMIC ascended up the chain and the leading edge process got more and more expensive, these capital expenditures became onerous even for the richest local governments. SMIC began performing a type of regulatory arbitrage, shopping their services to cities around the nation looking for the best deal. For example, in 2005, SMIC was running two factories in Shanghai. Then the next year, they engaged with the cities of Chengdu and Wuhan to start foundries there, too. Two more joint ventures at the cost of um, 1.5 to 3 billion each. It allowed SMIC to grow extremely fast while keeping their actual invested capital low. In a previous video, I likened advanced semiconductor foundry work to baking. And like baking, accumulated unwritten experience is critical. For the life of me, I can't make a decent cake, even if the steps in the recipe are right in front of me. This is a broad generalization, but foundry work is in many aspects an art that cannot be easily boiled down into steps. Not everything is or can be written down, so it's critical to have with you the best chefs. Both Grace and SMIC aggressively recruited overseas talent to fill their ranks, including Taiwanese from TSMC and UMC. Being a startup, these companies lured such employees with the promise of stock option riches. At the time, salaries on the Chinese mainland were far below that which can be found in the US or Taiwan. A senior manager in China, for instance, would get paid a quarter or a third of what that same person could get in the United States. Grace handed out stock options, but SMIC gave them out like candy. For certain key TSMC employees, SMIC offered 80,000 shares and stock option equivalents. Such amount of shares at the 1750 US IPO price in 2004 would be worth $1.4 million. Not to say that those people actually got their hands on all of that $1.4 million. I have worked at startups myself, and it is very common for that 80,000 number to quickly get diluted as the company goes through funding rounds and the like. Beyond the potential riches, people gravitated to SMIC for two other reasons. First, Many of the engineers were ethnic Han Chinese living and educated overseas and wanted to give back to their country. Of SMIC's founding 1,000 engineers, nearly 40% of them were Chinese citizens returning to the motherland. Second, many of them felt that they had hit the glass ceiling in an American or Taiwanese company. Big companies have often established ranks of who gets promoted, and there is often more qualified people than open spots. We should also mention the possibility of racism against Asians and Chinese in the United States, the bamboo ceiling. To join SMIC would be to step into a Silicon Valley-like environment and get in on the ground floor of something exciting, to build something for the future and glory of China. Hard to say no to that. By 2003, TSMC realized that Grace, and especially SMIC, were growing faster than it should have. For example, SMIC had managed to ramp up on a 0.18 micrometer process in just 12 months. This is without a prior track record of success in doing such things before. This was implausible and implied the loss of private, extremely valuable trade secrets. Thus, in that same year as SMIC prepared to go IPO on the NYSE, TSMC launched a pioneering intellectual property theft lawsuit against its mainland rival. This lawsuit was filed in California, and interestingly enough, TSMC asked for a jury trial. It would not be resolved for many years, but when it did, the jury found that SMIC had indeed infringed on TSMC intellectual property. The lawsuit went back and forth for several years, but when the dust finally settled six years later, TSMC won. They received the 10% stake in SMIC. Richard Chang resigned in 2009 after attempting a countersuit against TSMC that failed. At the same time, TSMC took to battling SMIC directly on its home turf. 
In 2004, TSMC won a public debate in Taiwan for permission to enter the mainland market. In 2007, TSMC's first fully owned foundry began operations in Shanghai. This appears to be a page out of their playbook. In my video about Singapore's chartered semiconductors, I mentioned TSMC founding a semiconductor foundry joint venture with the goal of battling chartered on their home market. It helped to weaken the overall market enough to decelerate SMIC's once torrid growth. Throughout this entire saga, SMIC lost money. The company had been running on subsidies, loans, and the money it received from investors, but the company could not consistently turn a profit on its own. There are a few reasons for this. First, there were the upstarts. SMIC was the largest Chinese foundry, but it was not alone. Other Chinese cities saw what was happening in Wuhan, Beijing, and Chengdu, and wanted in on the action. They began creating small SMICs of their own, saturating the market and bringing down profits for everyone else. One upstart story takes place in the city of Ningbo, the place of TSMC founder Morris Zhang's birth, and also my ancestral homeland. Ningbo Zhongwei was founded in 2002 by a team of mid-level TSMC managers. They bought used equipment from TSMC and invested $150 million of taxpayer money to build a leading fab capable of outputting 40,000 wafers a month. The fab reached a 10,000 wafers a month benchmark behind schedule. The company could not reach the necessary scale as TSMC's equipment was quite old and required expensive servicing, $100 to $150 per hour maintenance. Eventually, the company folded and it sold their factory to electric car maker BYD. Another reason for the uh, struggling losses has to do with the product being sold. In order to make sure that some of its early fabs got online as fast as possible, SMIC devoted them to creating commodity RAM. The fabs indeed got up and running really quickly, but making a commodity product meant low margins and intense competition. It's the same issue that Charter dealt with. You need to ascend the value chain and get to the leading edge. That means a lot of investment into R&D. So, too many startups, too much supply sloshing around, not enough differentiated product, and of course, some of the most economically challenging years with the global financial crisis. Where can you get the money to invest in the R&D for better product if you are not making money from your products? Is the Chinese government just going to have to constantly pump billions of dollars into your company? I guess they can, technically, but how long can you put money into a company that doesn't turn a profit? Singapore is quite rich. Singapore owned Chartered for 22 years, and for the majority of those years, Chartered churned out losses, despite becoming the third largest independent foundry in the industry. Just because you have a lot of money doesn't mean you like rolling it up in a cigar and smoking it. That's what's happening with SMIC and Chartered, so long as it did not own and create the technology behind the process themselves. They were trapped. Over time, Local city governments like Wuhan and Chengdu began to feel uncomfortable about these seemingly unending operating losses. After Richard's resignation, Chengdu and Wuhan terminated the partnerships. Chengdu sold its fab to Texas Instruments, and Wuhan decided to go it alone with a company called Xinxin Semiconductor. SMIC hired a new CEO in 2010 and sought to dial down on growth in order to achieve profitability. If Richard Chang was Uber's Travis Kalaknik, the vicious, driven founder determined to take over the world, then his successor, David Wong, was more like Dara Khosrowshahi. <sighs> Never gonna get that right. Trying to turn the company around and make a profit. David Wong did not last long. He resigned after losing a vote of confidence a year later. Tzu Yin Cho led the company as CEO until 2017, whereupon he helped stabilize the ship and turn out a very small profit. He retired in 2017 and was succeeded by co-CEOs Zhao Haijun and Liang Mongsong. Liang is famous in Taiwan for jumping ship from TSMC to Samsung and helping them reach the leading edge process node. It seemed that he had been doing the same with SMIC too, leading a team of 2,000 R&D engineers to ready the 7 nanometer process node. He realized just how important it is to research, create, and thus own the process technology itself, not to take shortcuts, and partner with others in sharing R&D costs. Per the recent reports, it seemed like that they were getting close to high volume production with 7 nanometer. 
This is of course great news for the Chinese semiconductor industry and represents a return to form for SMIC after many long stumbles. SMIC remains the premier foundry on the China mainland. Their recent billion dollar IPO on the Hong Kong and Shanghai markets after a 2019 NYSC delisting makes it clear. The Chinese national government is starting to invest real financial resources in actually developing an indigenous semiconductor space from the ground up. SMIC will likely be its centerpiece for making it happen. Alright guys, take care of yourselves out there. Stay safe.